What's up guys, it is Dr. Seth, and today we're gonna to be talking about solving hip internal rotation deficiency. And the first thing that we need to do is figure out what the hell hip internal rotation actually is. And that is when the femur is going to be rolling in and the foot is coming out. A lot of people, when I ask them what hip IR, they do something like that because the foot's going in, but just because the foot's going in, we gotta realize that for the foot to go in, femur goes out, this is external, that is internal. Second thing we gotta do is figure out why is hip internal rotation important. And if we're visualizing, Pretend that this collar is my pelvis, my thumbs are the heads of my femur, and if we're gonna be squatting to depth, we need the femurs to be able to have some degree of internal roll in order for that pelvis to dip below the plane of the femur. So if we wanna hit squat depth, we need to have enough IR availability to get there. And if you lack that IR availability, that's where things can get ouchy, ouchy, yuck, yuck in a bunch of places, cause shit's gonna get loaded more than wants to get loaded because of that range deficiency. And if you're missing hip IR, a 90-90 is going to be one of the first things that people suggest, and I am a fan of this, but there's a couple things that we've got to be aware of. If you're a big dude, get up against the bench, get up against the wall, get up against the couch, so you can try to keep your torso as upright as possible. Next thing is we want to make sure that we're actually at 90 degree angles. We don't want to be all crunched up like this, because if we're all crunched up like this, we're not going to be getting shit all out of it. The third thing that we want to do is in addition to just hanging out in the stretch, we want to start to contract in this position so we can gain better control over this position so we can have some carryover back to the lifts and we're not just passively hanging out here. How are we going to contract in this position? Well, the first thing I'll get lifters to do is we're going to think about trying to use the hips to pick the knees up and drive the feet into the floor. And we're going to hold that for somewhere between like 10 and 30 seconds. If you're having a harder time getting it to grab, I suggest longer holds. If you can get a really strong contraction really soon, we can run shorter holds. The next thing we're going to do is the exact opposite. We're going to make sure that we're not rolling the torso and cheating this, but we're going to try to push the knees into the floor and use the hips to lift the feet up. Now, for a lot of people, you're not going to be able to get this back leg to actually come off the ground that doesn't matter for now all that matters is that you have the intent to contract and get that sucker to come up because if we have that intent the contraction is going to build and as range of motion builds and we get better that foot is going to be able to start to move and we're going to be able to better display that but like i said we actually want this to carry back over to training and when we're trying to get the femur to roll internally when we're squatting what do we need to think about well the adductor group is going to be responsible for actually allowing that femur to roll in and like pulling that internal contraction to get us there and control that rotation in the bottom of the squat. And if you want to train the adages to do that, a Copenhagen plank with some modified intent is one of my favorites. And what we're going to do to modify that intent is all we're going to do is we're going to try to roll the toes in. That's going to be creating that hip IR. And from here, we can either hang out and hold this. We can dip hips towards the floor and pull ourselves out with that toes pointed down. Or if we want to get really fancy, we can even roll around the hip, trying to use the hip musculature to contract as we're spinning around that sucker. Now, that obviously isn't the last thing we want to do because it doesn't really look like a squat. It doesn't really look like a hinge. So we want to get that IR to carry over to a hinge. We're going to head over there to the kettlebells and figure that out. So if we want to learn to actually use that IR that we created with the 9090s, then got to pulling into with the modified Copenhagen's, a single leg RDL can be a freaking fantastic option. And key points for this, obviously we want to be on one leg, but with the back leg, we don't just want it flopping in the breeze because what we don't want to do is just be opening up into ER like we're doing a hip airplane. So with this back leg, we're going to be trying to pull the toes in. That's going to get the anterior adductors on the back leg firing, which will encourage them to fire on the front leg so that as we lower into the thing like RDL as we hinge, we can think about using the front of our hip to pull us into that hinge, loading into that internal rotation, feeling a big stretch to the lateral hip, and then we can squeeze our glutes up to the top. When we're doing these two, we don't want to be just letting the knee go forward, we're not doing a Superman squat. We want to make sure that we are pushing the knee back, getting that hinge, trying to drop the outside hip low so we're getting into hip IR. And again, all we're going to do is get that lateral hip stretch, use that stretch to push us up to the top. That's going to get us better at getting our glutes and adductors to work better at controlling that hip IR when we need to use it in the bottom of a squat or the start position of a deadlift. And if you're having a hard time finding the adductors with a kettlebell, easy thing we can do to teach that is get a band, hook it on something, hook it onto the back leg. This way, when you're doing the single leg RDL, the band is gonna be trying to pull the leg out. You will have to pull it in, which is gonna get the adductors to fire on both legs. And then we can use that to guide us into the bottom, feel that adductor contraction, feel that glute stretch, feel that glute squeeze up to the top. And that is gonna help you nail actually using that hip IR during a squat, during a hinge. So guys, hip internal rotation is very important. If yours looks worse than this, you probably need to work on it. So give this stuff in the video a try. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the channel. Peace out. Have a good night.